Voyager probes are not actually dead, but they are only a one-way voyage out of the solar system. And their final photos were taken in 1990, just 34 days before the craft turned off its cameras to save energy for the lengthy journey ahead, Voyager 1, the furthest spacecraft ever constructed by humans, took its final picture in February 1990, when it was 3.7 billion miles from the Sun. The spacecraft is still moving forward and is currently 14.2 billion miles from the Sun. It is observing a variety of strange phenomena. Carl Sagan had proposed to NASA that one of the Voyager probes gazes back towards Earth, exposing our planet as a pale blue dot amid the expanse of space. The hazy image was the result of his suggestion. Just 30 minutes before Voyager's cameras were turned off, this unmatched depiction of humanity was taken. Worth it? Absolutely, without a doubt. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at the final image Voyager space probes sent back to Earth. Make sure to stick till the end of this video, as we have a lot to cover. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. And let's get started. The Earth was captured by NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft on February 14, 1990, and the image is known as the pale blue dot. When mission officials directed Voyager 1 to turn its final glance back towards Earth, it was already hurtling out of the solar system beyond Neptune and nearly 3.7 billion miles from the Sun. The first family portrait of our solar system was made using a collection of 60 photos that were taken by the spacecraft. Earth is seen within a light beam that has been scattered in the image that would come to be known as the pale blue dot. From the perspective of Voyager 1, Earth appeared as a tiny point of light, roughly the size of a pixel. Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter and Venus were among the planets that Voyager 1 photographed in addition to Earth. A few important members were missing from the image. Mercury was too close to the Sun, Mercury was hidden by scattered sunlight bouncing about the camera, and Pluto, a dwarf planet, was too small, too far away, and too dark to be seen. The photographs provided mankind with a unique and an awe-inspiring view of their own planet and its neighbors. Each planet resembles Earth in that it is only a tiny dot of light. Uranus and Neptune appear elongated due to spacecraft motion during their 15-second camera exposures. It was difficult to find a way to present the photographs and adequately convey the scope of Voyager's achievement. The whole mosaic, which measured more than 20 feet in length, was displayed on a wall at the Theodore von Karman Auditorium of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which also built and operates the Voyager probes. The image of Earth had to be changed frequently because so many people touched it, according to members of the Voyager imaging team in a study report published in 2019. The family portrait continues to be the first and only attempt by a spacecraft to take a picture of our own solar system. Only three spacecrafts, Voyager 1, Voyager 2 and New Horizons, have been able to make such an observation from such a distance. One of the spacecrafts that travels the farthest on NASA's 45-year-old probes, Voyager is getting older, though, so a future mission might aim to outperform it. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have returned data on new moons and active volcanoes found in the Jovian and Saturnian systems decades after they parted ways to explore the cosmos. This is far longer than NASA had anticipated for a mission of this kind. However, being older has its own set of issues, even for a spacecraft. The probe encountered a problem with its attitude articulation and control system AACS, the system that keeps its antennae pointing towards Earth this year without any known interference in its previously flawless record. The confused probe started sending back inaccurate telemetry data through an onboard computer that had stopped working years previously, distorting the correct data as it became confused about its location in space. Voyager's blunder raises the question of whether it is time to retire one of NASA's oldest and furthest traveling space probes despite the fact that engineers were recently able to resolve the problem by instructing the system to revert back to its previous computer. Although the organization states that the inaccuracy doesn't pose a risk to the mission's long-term viability, some scientists have already begun working on developing Voyager's apparent air. According to Ralph McNutt, 
director of the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratories Space Science Division, we've gotten incredibly lucky with the Voyagers and the fact that the things are still working as well as they are is really a combination of technological miracle and some luck. Therefore, it's not shocking if things go wrong. A team at the Applied Physics Laboratory led by McNutt, who had the great luck to be present at Cape Canaveral, Florida, for the launch of Voyager 1 in 1977, has just finished submitting a thorough proposal to NASA for a mission concept that has the potential to go far beyond Voyager's capabilities. Their probe, known as Interstellar Probe, would be able to go even further than the Voyager missions while continuing to look for information on the heliosphere, the bubble-like region of space that protects our solar system from galactic radiation. McNutt's probe proposal with the correct technology, might be ready to launch between 2036 and 2042, depending on when it can acquire a gravity assist from Jupiter, where the craft's orbit would use the planet's gravitational pull to propel itself into space's furthest regions. If Interstellar Probe is successful, it may surpass its predecessor's record for being the farthest object ever constructed by humans in the universe. According to McNutt, Interstellar Probe would be trustworthy enough to last for at least 50 years, in contrast to the 45-year-old Voyager, which has outlasted its initial mission lifetime by a factor of 10. However, a hypothetical launch would be years away. While the original study was funded by NASA, the concept is still in its infancy and won't be turned into an official mission until it has been examined and handpicked by a decadal survey committee whose recommendations might take another two years to be finalized. But why precisely do we need probes when scientists now have access to powerful equipment like the James Webb Space Telescope and the eagerly anticipated Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, which will seek for dark matter? The simplest explanation is that the missions frequently have differing priorities and capabilities. While James Webb Space Telescope and Roman are astrophysics missions, that research things like exoplanets and distant galaxies, probes like Voyager and the Parker Solar Probe are heliophysics missions that examine the Sun's influence in space. Despite their differences, larger survey telescopes like JWST and probes are complementary tools. Both of their discoveries are necessary to paint an accurate, more complete picture of our cosmic surrounds. While Voyager won't disappear anytime soon, some scientists are grateful that many members of the scientific community are making preparations for the possibility that Voyager could go dark at some point. According to Merav Orfa, a professor of astronomy at Boston University and a longtime member of the Voyager crew, about 2030 is probably the final time that any of the equipment aboard Voyager will work. She finds it heartening that so many of her co-workers are engaged in cutting-edge initiatives that could ultimately make the best use of Voyager's information. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.